Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are looking at tables of equivalent ratios with parts and holes. It's going to be exciting. If not, at least I'll try and make it sound exciting. Let's get into it. We are going to quickly talk about what a part-to-part -part ratio looks like. I'm going to give a simplified sample problem, and then we're going to take what we learned from the sample problem and apply it to a more challenging practice problem. So let's get into it. A part-to-part -part ratio is a comparison between two portions of the whole amount. A common example for that is when you have a group of people or a classroom where you have a boy group and a girl group and you compare them. In this case, we would have a ratio of boys to girls or five to three. What we're also given, even though we're not told it explicitly, is that we can take this classroom and calculate the total population. If there's five boys and three girls, there's a total of eight students. And we can use that to make all sorts of different ratios too. The ratio of boys to total students, five to eight. The ratio of girls to total students, three to eight. Now, with this, we can make it one step more complicated. And as math teachers, we always do that, so get ready. Inside of a table, you could take those numbers, three or five, three, and eight, and set up proportional classrooms. In other words, classrooms that still have that ratio of three to five boys to girls, but yet they have a different number of students. And that would look something like this. If you had 10 boys and six girls, that's still an equivalent ratio of five to three. And we can now say, how many total students do we have? Well, we've got 16, because 10 plus 6 is 16, and that gives us this whole massive pile of students here, right? And that's what it's going to look like. Now we can learn some things from this table. We can see that column 1 and column 2 will always be proportional, and they will have the same proportion, 5 to 3. We can also see that column 1 plus column 2 will equal column 3. That makes sense. It's part, part, and the whole, right? Boys plus girls equals total number of students. So that will be consistent. Also, and this one here is maybe not as obvious, but you can calculate a constant between the rows. I don't know if you noticed this here, but you, 5 times 2 equals 10. So 2 is our invisible constant there. 5 times 2, 3 times 2, 8 times 2. You will have a constant that you can multiply between the rows. And that's what we're going to use as we fill in a table that looks like this. So this is our simple sample that I told you I would put together um, with nice, easy to work with numbers. Remembering those same three main things that column one and column two will always be proportional. In this case, we're actually given part, part, and whole. So we can say our proportion between column one and column two is now 15 to one. That's fine. And the column one plus column two will always equal column three. And if we calculate a constant between the rows, then we can use that to multiply. So let's fill in this entire table. You might have been able to do that already without even thinking about it. It's a pretty simple table. But we I want to show you a couple of principles that you will need when we make the numbers a little bit harder. First off, this is our table. What I would do is find the constant. What are we multiplying times between the row number one and row number two. One times something equals two. We find that by dividing, two divided by one will give us two. So our constant is two. We're going to multiply the things in, the numbers in row one times two and fill in our second row. 15 times two, 
30. 16 times 2, 32. Now, I filled in 32 without showing 16 times 2. Is there another way you could have figured that out? Yeah, absolutely. You can add 30 plus 2 to get 32. Part plus the part equals the whole. So when we have missing detail or missing numbers like that, we can find them sometimes in multiple ways. Let's try out the, the missing pieces here at the end. We've got two blank spaces. How would you figure those ones out? Here's one method that you might have used. If I look here between 16 and 48, I can say 16 times something gives me 48. That gives me a nice even number of 3. 16 times 3 gives me 48. That is my constant from the top row all the way down to the third row, which means I can now multiply 15 times 3 to get this number. And what would I do to fill in that other missing number? You could have said 48 minus 45 gives me 3, or you could have said 1 times 3 gives me that. Both would have been perfectly fine. Both would have been accurate and correct. You could also check the proportions of each of the rows. You can check that this is a 15 to 1 ratio, that this one, when simplified, would also be a 15 to 1 ratio, and 45 to 3 is also a 15 to 1 ratio. In other words, these are all proportional ratios or equivalent ratios. Now, we are going to move into a question that is absolutely ridiculous. I want to warn you before we move into there. We're going to be looking at a table that is much more difficult to read than this one. It's diffi more difficult to fill in, and I did that for a reason. We are going to follow all of the same steps that we did filling out this table when we go on to our next one. Here it is. I know it's fractions, and that makes me a terrible human being. I understand that, but I've already consigned myself to that, so it's, it's cool. But I want to show you this as a table that has fractions in it so that you can see all of the same rules apply, only now we're doing operations with fractions. First off, I'm going to fill in the first row, which has um, the part of two and a half. It has a whole over here of eight and three quarters. To figure out the missing part, I'm going to do subtraction. I take the whole amount minus the part I know about, and that will give me my missing value. Just like we did before, right? 15 plus 1 is 16 in the last one. This is just with fractions. Same thing, we can check our work. 6 and a quarter plus 2 and a half is equal to 8 and 3 quarters. At this point, we could also now calculate this proportion. What is the proportion from this part to this part? To calculate a proportion, you will set it up as a fraction and do six and a quarter divided by two and a half, and the proportion I have set up is a two and a half to one proportion, which is very difficult to work with. I understand that. But it, it still works just the same way as everything else that we did on the previous slide. Now let's fill in the last four places and figure out how we're going to do that. You can do this in multiple ways. One, you can use the proportion that you've calculated here to fill in the proportion of 18 and 3 quarters over to there. I think it might be a little easier to just um, find the multiplier. That's the way I did it, where I said 2 and a half times what gives me 18 and 3 quarters. It's still complicated math because I have to then turn it around and do 18 and 3 quarters divided by 2 and a half to figure out my missing value. And my missing value is ridiculous, seven and a half. But it shows you it's the same steps as what we did before. And now I have my constant or my multiplier of seven and one half. I'm going to use that seven and a half to fill in the two missing spaces in my second row. I'll multiply six and a quarter times seven and a half. 
to give me 46 and 7 eighths. I'll multiply 8 and 3 quarters times 7 and a half to give me 65 and 5 eighths. I can again check my work, which is kind of exciting because it's better than English class where you can't check your own work. You can go ahead and add 46 and 7 eighths plus 18 and 3 quarters and see if they add up. You can also check to see if 46 and 7 eighths and 18 and 3 quarters are proportional of 2 and a half to 1. Again, a little bit challenging there, but, but the same basic principles from our, uh, from our first graph. Or table, I should say. In the end, now what I'm going to do is take a look at these values. What you will do to solve it is the same exact step. You would have 8 and 3 quarters come down to here and find out the multiplier. What are you multiplying times 8 and 3 quarters to get 17 and a half? Then use that same multiplier here and here, or you can use um, the equivalent ratio. But now's the time for you to go ahead and solve it. What I'd like you to do is try and fill in the last two blanks in this table. I'm going to give you a little bit of time. Pause the video for a minute. I'll give you a minute. Okay, did you pause it? Did you try it out? No? I had someone tell me in the comments that they didn't, and that was just rude. Let's try it out. Um, what you end up with is these two numbers. That's what you should have. The ratio uh, or the multiplier, I guess the constant, from the first row to the final row is 2. We're multiplying it times 2, which is nice. Um, but we can also see that there is a 2 and a half to 1 ratio between the um, first column and second column, and that they do add up to give us 17 and a half. Some things to take away. One, think simple. Make a simple sample so that you can see exactly what you're doing. I, I encourage you to do that and know that the patterns you do with the easier work will continue on to the patterns that you will, or to the work that you do in the second one. Second, that the rules are the same for simple and complex. And there are lots of ways to find the missing numbers. Use those different ways to your advantage. Use them to check your work as you move forward. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.